Yo, 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 what it do, what it be, y'all, it's your boy, Agent A-N-T, reppin' the motherfucker, spell Black Agency, game, gang, you know we don't play none of that shit, all that shit, got a underground king and queen commentary for y'all today, so, let's get it, let's set the scene by introducing Poggio Bracciolini, he'll be the first one we talk about today, he was born on the uh, 11th of February, 1380. And he was a high-ranking scholar and scribe for the Catholic Church. And by high-ranking, I mean during his years of service, he served under six different popes, y'all. Six. He served under more popes than LeBron won championships, folks. And he, he was alive during the time of the Byzantine Empire collapsing. So uh, he saw and recorded some critical and crazy points throughout history. It's kind of safe to say. Um, besides being a scribe and scholar, he also dealt with... Some of the most influential and religious political figures uh, of his time. And even had the honor of being a mediator in the three pope controversy. Which personally, I didn't look into the details because I didn't think it was important info for this specific video. But it does sound interesting and important. I may have to go through that uh, rabbit hole later. Or if anybody already has, let me know what it is. Um, so, despite his... Uh, close ties with the church poggio was very critical of the papacy papacy i don't know uh all, he often brought to light the corruption of seediness that was ingrained in the culture of the vatican even in 1380 also despite his open criticisms he remained employed by the church and was even commissioned by the pope around 14 15 around 1420 ish to move to Constance and move from uh, from Constance and explore ancient monasteries surrounding Germany, Switzerland, and France, and kind of look for any uh, antique artifacts or maybe antique writings from anti from early antiquity that may give some insight, maybe some new philosophies on life, or even some insight on how these you know ancient people lived or something. You know, not not too ancient though, because we're talking about you know 1380 they're trying to go back and look at like the Greeks and the Romans especially in Germany and stuff like that so um, especially with Christianity they're trying to look and sweep they're trying to they, at the time they're trying to look for you know uh, passages or something that to kind of clean up the the rough parts of the Bible <laughs> so uh, uh, did, did they find some artifacts in these uh, monasteries oh boy did they I mean Poggio sure probably found some interesting artifacts, but the most important things uh, are, you know, partially translated uh, scripts or scrolls uh, that were thought to be lost, like Cicero's works or maybe even previously undiscovered and unheard of, uh, like the Astronomica, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's an ancient poem book of astronomical theories astronomy theories if you will but it was written in in poetic form same thing with the uh, the holy grail that he found uh de rerum natura which is uh basically on the nature of things it was a uh manuscript which was copied down by uh, a roman poet and philosopher lucretius and uh so it, it that contained six books a, a, a six book collection of poems essentially describing Epicurus and his philosophies which is the only surviving work of Lucretius y'all the, the only surviving work of Lucretius is his copying down some some work from other shit like, don't ever let nobody tell you that copying shit don't get you no anyway but I'm uh, just playing just playing uh, copyright infringement is real and so is uh, the, the, what is it uh, what is it stealing somebody's work uh, plagiarism plagiarism is real too sorry uh, had to think of the word but a six book collection of poems essentially describing Epicurus and his philosophies is what Poggio found on top of you know the the a, a, the astronomy album which again I, after finding the astronomy album, you thinking like, oh, bro, it can't get much doper than this. And then you find this, bro, because really he found it through Cicero's work. 
uh, he recognized the name of uh, uh, he recognized the name of Epicurus from uh, Cicero's works, which uh, amazing that he was able to you know translate everything and know. Keep in mind, he this is not his uh, like language. This dude Poggio is like he's Italian, so he's like translating these Greek and like uh, ancient Greek texts and shit. So it's like for him to recognize Epicurus's name from Cicero's work, and then it wasn't even his; it was Lucretius's. It's kind of crazy to me. So. Uh, Thank God that it survived, though, because the only the only surviving work, like I said, of Lucretius was uh, this uh, De Rerum Natura, the, On the Nature of Things, which pretty much describes in great detail Epicurus and his true philosophies, which, after reading about and watching videos on Epicureanism, it, it's, bro, it's fascinating and astonishing how relevant his philosophies are even today, so... Before I get into the legend, the mythologies, philosophies, Socrates, hypotheses, and all that, let's look at Epicurus, the man, and what we know about him. So Epicurus was born in 341 BC on the Greek island of Somos, and his parents were both Athenian, uh, both of us had Athenian uh, backgrounds to them and had a typical, he had a typical Greek education. Uh, in his early years and after the death of Alexander the Great, he joined the military and after he completed his service, he moved back to his family to be, uh, he, his family wasn't living up in uh, Somos no more, they moved up to Cal Colophon, which is basically Turkey, right, uh, present day Turkey, but, uh, so just think about it, he was born 341 B.C., and they found his shit like 1320 for yeah for like 1420 or so like a thousand years later they finally find this dude's work and this is like after epicureanism had already you know keep in mind christianity pretty much killed everything off like literally and <laughs> and uh, metaphorically like it, it was the hottest thing going you know christianity swept the globe but We'll talk about that more in a minute, but, uh, so yeah, he, from here, uh, for after he came back from the military and stuff like that, he came under the tutelage of a scholar named, uh, Nausiphones, N-A-U-S-I-P-H-O-N-E-S, Nausiphones, or something like that, but he, he was a follower of Democritus, and later he studied under Piero, who he admired greatly, uh, uh, Epicurus did, him, he, uh, him and Pyrrho were like this, he even came up with the term ataraxia, get to that more in a minute too, uh, it, it's also kind of theorized that Epicurus studied cynicism, uh, because some of his teachings show some influ influences from Diogenes, D-I-O-G-E-N-E-S, uh, of S Sinope, and because there's a Diogenes of like Epicureanism or something like that, and then there's a Diogenes of Sinope, which uh, here's a little story about with this guy. Uh, the only book we have about Epicurus is from Diogenes, uh, so to, which to me reinforces, kind of reinforces that theory that they may or may not have personally met through their lifetimes or. Diogenes knew enough about him to write a book on him, obviously, so they, you know, he had to have, he was very popular, obviously, at the time Epicurus was, so, not to say that Diogenes wasn't, because, listen to this, um, they, it's kind of unconfirmed whether or not they met, despite that, though, if you look up this Diogenes, or Diogenes guy, D-I-O-G-E-N-E-S, he was quite the character, and honestly, he might just be history's first troll. Now that I, you know, now that I studied it and stuff like that. But yeah, dude was a menace in the uh, philo philosophy uh, field, if you will. He was a sh <laughs> man. Look him up uh, after you've watched this video. But uh, <laughs> uh, after doing some cre quick research into him, I think it would be safe to say uh, you'd have to take 
his biography of Epicurus or really anything with a grain of salt because he was a cynic. He's, he's, he's cynicism for a reason. He didn't get that term <laughs> looking at the bright side of it. Anyways, but um, basically in the biography and, you know, other... He accuses Epicurus' uh, school of basically being an a ancient Greek trap house, which has been basically concrete debunked at this point. So, I mean, it's, like I said, you got to take anything that was in his bi biography kind of with a grain of salt at that point. So, Epicurus was, uh, what we know for sure is that Epicurus was a hedonist, and his movement evolved into Epicurean Hedonism, or Epicureanism for short, which uh, borrowed from Hedonism, Stoicism, and Cynicism. Uh, but they also had key differences from each one. Uh, hedonism is the philosophy of finding happiness through material or self-indulging means. Meanwhile, Epicureanism preaches the practicality of being content with what you have, and instead of seeking pleasures of the senses, uh, seeking pleasure of uh, the mind or seeking pleasure of knowledge and helping others is the highest pleasure attainable. So, kind of a different aspect to look at it. Like, okay, uh, your five senses can fool you sometimes, but uh, the, the knowledge, the more knowledge you have, you know, it's you're never going to get tired or you can't have... you. You can have too much of a good thing, but I don't think knowledge is one of those good things you can have too much of, just in, in my opinion. Now, I always do say don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to, you know, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, this also kind of somewhat follows Stoicism because Stoics believe in being content and living honorably and virtuously, but... Uh, pleasure and pain are indifferent and should be ignored or kept in check. Uh, but Epicure Epicurus and Epicureans believe that one should maximize the pleasures in life with those pleasures living an honorable and content life. You know, gaining knowledge and helping others, you know. I mean, that's and if you're, it's pretty much a self-indulgence kind of thing. You know, if you're, if you are, uh, living honorable and being content with your life then I mean there's not really anything to uh, want need or even be upset over so that's where he kind of thought maybe uh, it is Stoics but Stoics didn't believe in that in you know if you're going through a rough time then you just you know suck it up buttercup but uh, uh, Epicurus believed like hey if you're going through a rough time bro that's that's uh, that's building you up for you know if you next time you're in this kind of situation, bro, you're gonna know how to deal with it in a more you know tolerable manner, you know if something like that. But uh, in, not to say that like I said that man or woman shouldn't want or shouldn't struggle, but they should be more appreciative of not just possessions but the people around them, like. There may be some adversity and hardships, but those situations, like I said, help foster courage when faced with similar situations in the future. Uh, an Epicurus teacher, Piero, was the first one to coin the term ataraxia, like I talked about earlier. And this was a word used to describe serene calmness. And uh, Epicureans believe that ataraxia is achieved through being content with the small things in life. Uh, Epicurus himself is even quoted as saying, Do not spoil the things you have by desiring what you have not. Remember what you have now was once among the things you had hoped for. Which is crazy. You're like, 341 BC, you over here spitting, son. Uh, another little side note, my pops always, you know, kind of told me to live within my means. And it's kind of like, you know, I'm, you know, whatever, pops. You know, I'm, I'm trying to ball out. I'm young, but Epicurus, bro, I might actually heed yo. I might heed yo. Uh, he, Pops was on some Epicurean shit, and he didn't even know it, bro. I might have to look into, like, man, might have to listen to old man more often. But as I was saying, uh, Epicurus believed in being content with the small things in life. Uh, now, in today's age of uh, instant satisfaction and advertising, 
it may be hard not to look at some of these, you know, Instagram influencers or uh, blue check marks and, and strive to want or want their lives or even be jealous. Uh, but Epicurus believed that entertaining the masses or striving to be popular was a waste of time. And, you know, building strong personal relationships through helping your family and friends and, and just being your genuine self and being authentic that was more satisfying than trying to please everyone. Like I said, bro, bro is spitting. Like, <laughs> uh, I'll have to leave a link to the video I watched. The eight life lessons is from Epicureanism or whatever, bro. That that video, bro, salute to them because they did their thing on that. But it, uh, but like I said, it, it's okay to want or not be content, but that doesn't want that doesn't have to affect your relationship with the things or the people that you care you know the most about uh just because you know you see something that you don't have or you know your friend has something that you don't have doesn't necessarily oh you know i gotta get like my friend or you know or even you know why is my friend doing this it could it doesn't even have to be your friend it could be like your neighbor or just you know somebody you see on the internet you know why can't my life be like this you, even in tragedy, you, you might ask, you know, oh, why, God, why? Well, uh, Epicurus um, kind of was uh, cynical on, on death and tragedy and, he, and even gods. You know, he didn't think that the belief in God or gods was foolish, but he did think that stressing over how gods affect life and the aftermath, you know, the afterlife in pretty much. It led to a lot of anxiety in his era and that, you know, he thought it was foolish to stress over things that were beyond our control, not our understanding, because in his mind, like humans already, you know, we we are around death all the time. We understand it. We just uh, the fear that we have of it and, you know, the 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 fear of dying, the process of dying and, you know, uh, coping with death and then when we're it's finally our time you know dealing with our process it's, it's stressful man <laughs> despite how comfortable anybody portrays themselves to be with going like i i knew somebody who always said you know they was ready for their time to go and you know they finally it was their time and they was they they didn't want to go bro they was begging for any way to stay on on the you know as, as, as shitty as this life is and how we complain about it bro when it when it's ending bro it's not like we want this shit to be over for real like and that's what's so crazy and he thought people stressing over that uh was just foolish which to me is crazy because i feel like that's a lot of uh religion is uh just the promise of or or you know the the insight of hey if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you after you die. Or if you, you know, if you live virtuously uh, in life, you'll, you know, you'll have a great, you know, afterlife, which, you know, he was just like, nah, bro, like, if you're already living a good life, then why does it matter if you're going to be, you know, having a good death? If you, if you, if we're, if it's a long dirt nap or whatever, if we, if it's just nothing but blackness or whatever, and we don't, then there's nothing there. And we're not there to personally or feel our death in our moments or whatever. He's like, bro, when it happens, it happens. You know? Uh, <laughs> and this is just straight. That's Epicurus. No need to really sweat the small stuff. And death is the small stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe he was onto something, though, you know? Uh... But he urged people to think more critically and not let religion control their life, which unfortunately went unheeded as Christianity swept the globe harder than Michael Jackson, the Beatles, and BTS combined. He, he yo, Christianity hit the Roman streets harder than that Wiz Khalifa patch, son. I promise. Like, yo, after Christianity, they said, bro, why would we believe in six, seven God? Bro, we got one that does it all. That does it all, fam. We not even going to question it. Like... <laughs> You want to talk about a pissing contest? My my one god is just as powerful, if not more powerful, than yo seven, motherfucker. Like like that's the yo like that's bruh ancient shit, bruh ancient pissing contest shit. I guess, but uh, 
But I mean, if you just look at how relevant Epicurus and his teachings are today, I mean, look at all the philosophers, and, you know, the great minds who were inspired by Epicurus. Now, one of those is Karl Marx. Now, that is neither here nor there. Uh, great philosopher, some of the people who followed his philosophy were not. All right, we'll just say that. Uh, but I mean, we, I mean, like I said, we, we have Lucretius, and of course we have Poggio di Broccio, di Braccio, to thank for what we do know uh, about Epicurus and his teaching. I might have to do another video later on, you know, the Astronomica, but it, it is kind of crazy. Uh, just the fact that, you know, these guys in ancient Greece, you know, bef before, uh, Jesus death, you know, and Alexander the Great dying and, you know, those two, uh, events changed history forever. Like, like, I'll have to do more videos on, on Conquerors. I'll have to do, uh, not, maybe not on Underground Kings and, well, maybe on Underground Kings and Queens, because... I'm a, I definitely got to do Alexander the Great, uh, Genghis Khan, and uh, Attila the Hun. Those are three. I think those are three probably of the most underrated. I mean, Alexander the Great doesn't get the, the, the credit. He does. Like, yeah, people know about him. I mean, he's Alexander the Great. Maybe I think a lot of people might get him confused with King Arthur. Not the same fucking guy. King Arthur not even not even fucking real. Let me tell you what. Maybe he's real, but listen, there's more chance of Alexander the Great being real than fucking King Arthur. Let me tell you. There ain't no Knights of the Round Table, none of that. But King Arthur, I tell you what, he cro bro, he as a Greek, he said, "Yo, we finna go into the Fertile Crescent and make that shit ours." And guess what? He fucking did. But <clears throat> anyway, it's not about Alexander the Great. Although uh Epicurus did live kind of like I said during his time which I, it's such a fascinating time and this yo, this is what was going on before you know Christianity came around and uh, women were getting killed for being smart you know because even like I was saying earlier there was claims that you know Epicurus' school was a trap house no fam he ran this school it was called the garden and they they had this mind-blowing uh, theory that women and slaves should be able to come to the garden and be treated like humans. You know how, like, yo, son, like, look it up. My boy Epicurus, he was for the, for the people. Like, uh, just yeah, one of the cold philosophers. Th that Dio Jeans guy too. Look him up, cause that yo. Some of the shit he was doing, I don't even know. Some them ancient Greeks, bro, they were very uh. It's kind of weird how it's like y'all were, uh, and even the Vatican too, y'all are supposed to be these, you know, godlike, you know, very uh, luxurious, you know, bougie, bougie figures, if you will. I, I can't think of the term, these very grand figures of history, but like, you look at them and they was all doing orgies and like, they was doing wild shit back in the day, man. <laughs> but that's why I love history, cause we like they was just figuring shit out and writing shit down too. Imagine when motherfucking the aliens find the internet, we all gonna die. <laughs> like I seen one uh, tweet talking about if aliens took over, then you know motherfuckers would would you had motherfuckers tweeting about how they would try and mate with aliens if you will and i find that crazy how pe like I, even if they were joking like granted aliens coming down here and people mating with them that's crazy but the fact that people would be more open to joking about like oh uh i'm a i'm gonna have sex with an alien but like a dude had saying they have sex with the same sex is like oh my god just like bro it don't affect you in no way shape or form let let these let, let them let them do their thing bro like that's that's more for us <laughs> you feel me 
I mean, I, I, I don't get it to me. I mean, people be so open about the wrong things. <laughs> but it's uh, enough of my rant. I got less than a minute left of this video. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I want to do more like this. Excuse the mess of my studio. But I, like I said, I want to do more of these soon. So uh, stay tuned. Coming live from the Spell Block HQ. It's been your boy, Agent A N T, repping the Spell Block Agency. Game gang. You know we don't play none of that shit, all that shit. And uh, yeah, y'all be safe. Do not get smoked. I'm out. Uh, just about. Been do playing a lot of Fallout. I don't know. Tried to stretch that rhyme out. Oh my god, I'm going crazy at the end. But uh, if you like this, leave a like. Leave a comment on some of the unknown figures of history. I maybe should do uh, a video about. Uh, subscribe, ring the damn bell, all that shit. Uh, I'm gone.